Michael, mm. welcome to Coffee Talk. <laughs> this is hot cocoa for Christmas. <laughs> yes. It's Sip and Dip Donuts, and they have some of the best hot chocolate mix. I love it. This morning, I asked for like one of those box of Joes, and they said yes. Yeah. And I said, can you put hot cocoa in it? And she went, uh... <laughs> Angela? <laughs> After talking it out for a bit, they were like, I don't see why not. <laughs> well, to be honest, I had never heard of it being in those before either. Yeah, so it shocked I, you a little. It shocked me a little. I was like, what a great idea. So we're having a lovely time, but why are we gathered here today? Every now and then, mac and cheese hits the news in a way that the fans really want us to know about. All right. Something of a novelty store, like a like a weird things store named Archie McPhee came out with the macaroni and cheese candy cane. We were sent this by like 17 different fans. But none of them sent it. I no, had to order it. I had to order it myself. Yeah. Apparently these just taste like a big old bowl of cheesy deliciousness. Yeah, we're not sure how to think about it either. I, I do like the box. It has, you know, a uh, rubber chicken, creepy ghouly thing. Well, here it is. So here's what you wanted us to talk about. Extra cheesy. Now you see, this is exactly Exactly why they made this product was because everybody would share it and go, ew, ew, hi baby glow. <laughs> the tentative walk backwards. Six candy canes here. Sugar, corn syrup, water, artificial flavor, two yellow dyes. So there's no cheese. Do you it. suspect that there'll be like a cheese flavor? Well, wouldn't they? What be? if it's just mint? Like, is it, it's just a yellow candy cane? They've punked us all. It's clearly a product not made for actual purchase. No. It's to drive traffic to the website. I think I've had candy canes that have looked like this, but they've just been pineapple. That makes sense to me. Butterscotch? Butterscotch, yep. It's probably not gonna go well with my nice, delicious hot cocoa. Hold on, I gotta operate. Operation. Don't kill me, operation. <laughs> we don't know what he's got. Hepatitis. It smells like the inside of, a, of, a, of an oft-used but never washed child. Toy. That's a disgusting description. Infrequently used smelly children's toys as a food. There's many ways to eat a candy cane. You can suck it sharp. Uh huh. All right, should we both suck it at the same time? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> tastes like pineapple to me. Yeah, it doesn't taste anything like macaroni and cheese. Not a bit. Oh, it's butterscotch. 100%. What the Paren actually butterscotch. Look at this idiot noodle cartoon character being like, <laughs> I'm a liar. Like, is there anything on it that's like, yeah, it says extra cheesy. They are so trying to just get you to buy it and talk about it. And here we are taking the freaking bait. According to the company's website, the candy canes are comfort food that tastes like comfort food with instant mac and cheese flavor. There's nothing else on here. Mac and cheese candy canes, extra cheesy, Andy McPhee. That's all you get. Archie McPhee. Andy McPhee was a character from Dawson's Creek. There's other stuff in there. All right. I'll be honest, I'm glad that it was a lie because I don't want to be tasting like cheesy candy canes. You get a free glow chicken with every order. Oh, fingers on hands and hands on fingers. That's a big meme on the internet. I, I don't know if we're, I, I keep getting a little bit of macaroni and cheese. You do not. Zach will give us an independent taste test analysis. Doesn't it smell a little like what I described? It's definitely butterscotchy. Yeah. Would you describe this candy cane as extra cheesy? Do you sense oh, any oh. cheese flavor in it at all? Zach. Just the slightest hint on the back end. There is a little bit of scent of mac and cheese. The, Sniff it. That smells like an old library book. It smells like like dirty socks. Oh, wait a minute. If you hold it further out and smell, now I smell a little bit of Oh the yeah, candy. it does. It totally does. It's true. <laughs> no, I'm tasting cheese. I'm tasting like straight up cheese. <laughs> what? what? I, Nina is hyper cheese sensitive. I've got like a Yanni uh, <laughs> If you plug your nose, then eventually release your nose, okay. you get like this, this horrible... <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, right. it tastes like sugar right now. Can you teach us how to use that nose? Oh, I can. This nose has technology in it. When you put it on, the increase of tension on the elastic makes it flash. That's your $4 worth of technology. How does this look in terms of Christmas? Yeah, you look like the the portly sort of winded reindeer. <laughs> the one that's like, you guys go. They're like, you got a red nose. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is not very Christmassy at all. <laughs> On to the next segment. See you then. So not to just do two Junts carts all over again, because we did one shop for Christmas trees and we have come here to Klein's Greenery before, but you have a mission. I like to get some cut greens for my window boxes. I came here and I was dissatisfied with the prices and I decided I was gonna go look somewhere else. Well, it turns out these are the best prices. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna, <laughs> maybe a wreath or two 
and maybe a little centerpiece for the um, living room. And the remnants of Building 19 behind you. It's all gone. You can see that's where the building was out all over there. That it lives on in Ollie's. Yes. <laughs> Suspicious. I'm not using the term bankruptcy fraud, but I'm thinking of balls already. A nice basket with a nice little display on top. I kind of like nice them in the I'm kind of looking for something like that, but not so tall for my living room. I want something that's kind of flat that I can put on the table. They're in big red boots over there. Ah, that's a little kitsch for me. He doesn't like it. How do you feel about like the artificial pine cones? Those are real pine cones. They're just painted a little artificially. How do you feel about artificial <clears throat> birds? Those are real birds. They're just a little painted. Bird. It's kind of pretty. I like the roundness of it personally. I do too. Why is it dripping blood? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just the, the dye and the bird. Those are kind of cool too. I like that. Yeah. A little deer. These are 17 for a boot. I gotta tell you, Nina, I'm with John. I don't really want the boots. It's a, it's a good value. It's a good value for a boot dollar. Do you want a boot? I think you want just one boot though. Can you say boot? 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 No. Oh, uh, I think these are just bundles. They're just ropes, coiled. This is a cash and check only establishment. Get Gloria cash. has no cash and no checks. Mom. I like the woodland swag too. I kind of like this, the plain small logs over there. Yeah, it's called a cemetery log, which is a little sad. I like the rustic, I like the handle being made out of pine swath. <laughs> You made your choice? Yeah, this lovely centerpiece. I don't know how much cash I'm carrying. It's the only thing, you know? I'm so, I live such a credit card life. Eight bucks a, a, a bundle, but this is actually by far the cheapest. Could the demolished building 19 and the fence, like it's in like a prison. 5 dollars that's pretty reasonable. I hope I have enough money now, I'm to like $45. Wooden, bo wooden buttes? The wooden buttes are cute, you Is you a happy John? I am, it's kind of a lot of money. But it's Christmas and I like fresh decorations. I'll be able to keep the planner, but most of it's gonna end up eventually in the spring in the recycling pile. So this is a $50 investment to wake up in the morning and pass by some nice smelling, nice looking, Christmassy goodness. Yeah, it's a little excess. You gotta spend on what you like, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. I brought some booze. Mr. Booze. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey. Rye whiskey. <laughs> Please don't let me down. down. I'm gonna make an eggnog. <laughs> Getting right to the point. It's not gonna be too boozy though, though you're with all the cream. You make it as milk. boozy as you want. A bit of holiday cheers. All right. It's all it is, holiday cheers. As boozy as you do. Traditionally, it's actually fermented. Ooh. Some people ferment it like over the course of a year. But we don't have that much time, so we're gonna make like a, a fake version. Okay. Fermenting is really big. Have you noticed that? Fermenting sauerkraut. Oh fermenting yeah. And ass <laughs> and sourdough. <laughs> First, I need to separate these eggs, and I'm not good at this. Okay. Can you do this for me? I have some skill. <laughs> See, I would screw this up like immediately. Fishing egg yolks out of the bowl with my yeah. hands. I enjoy eggnog. I used to love it as a kid. I think when you're a kid, you're really like into like fatty stuff. Yeah, I find now that I'll immediately end up with like heartburn, <laughs> you know, more than four ounces. Like it's it's done. It'll be there for the next five hours. <laughs> you can always do the, uh, the the fancy like eggnog lattes. The holiday flavor where they switch over from pumpkin spice to, to, the, to the eggnog. eggnog. Yeah, that's four eggs. We're gonna put um, a third cup. This is based on Alton Brown's recipe. This okay. is not an, an original EJ Massa. So we're gonna incorporate that until it's all smooth. And then it's really just a dumping game of these things, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's okay. You yeah. almost dumped it. That was a teaspoon of nutmeg, a pint of milk, a cup of cream. Ooh, heavy cream. Heavy oh, cream. Beautiful. I love heavy cream. I've been keeping heavy cream around the kitchen now, finding new uses for it. I love it. I added a little to some tomato soup the other day. Delicious. This is the, the, rice. the rye whiskey. I might need another one um, for me. <laughs> <laughs> one for the nog, one for me. Yeah, like Homer Simpson with the gas. One for you. One for me, one for you, one for me. <laughs> Three ounces of whiskey. A little whisko of all the ingredients dumped in there. Fermented eggnog gets like really like foamy and thick, which is kind of disgusting in some ways because it's old, old eggs. <laughs> yeah. To simulate this, we'll just whip these eggs into a fury. <laughs> Mr. Booze, Mr. B double O Z. Sure smells booze. <laughs> you got a while before you get to stiff peaks, that's for sure. That sounds dirty, Zach, but it's not. Yeah, it's not stiff. 
It's not stiff. Yeah, those peaks are limp. Do you want to just like go watch a movie and like, <laughs> take the pressure off for a little while? <laughs> the adults know what we're talking about. The kids don't know. That would go great in a Shrek movie. <laughs> Super in your window, Chalmers. <laughs> More power! Uh, that looks good. Use my Ooh. traditional 70s mugs. These are Platt's Graph, 1976. Cheers. Cheers. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. It's refreshing. It's eggy, it's got a little bit of booze. I can definitely taste the booze. And you could definitely taste how the meringue kind of simulates the fermentation too. Well, what a nice IG Jay, for the holiday. I think so. Merry Christmas. Please try to bring me these toys. A bicycle, an atomic laboratory, a machine gun. Well, hello. I was tasked with uh, making a suit for Ooh, you. What so a nice blanket. This is gonna be the big reel, ready? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. wait. Oh, Frank, he's gonna shut it down. Nothing was explained. The two of you were just like, hey, hi. <laughs> I put all my energy into making the thing. Yeah, fine. But he's supposed to like know how to host a show. I don't know what to want me to do. $10,000, huh? Okay, a thousand, huh? We have a deal. We always thought, wouldn't it be great to dress John up as... Are you mic'd? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Just very nicely mic'd, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to manage every aspect but himself. <laughs> I'm just gonna go sit over here. Come here. Come, okay, fine, don't. We've said, what if John dressed like Santa Claus? <laughs> and we've looked online for Santa Claus costumes. You know, they're a little too small in, in general. Yes. And then I think one time we were at uh, Macy's looking yep. at ornaments, and we were like, wouldn't it be great to dress him like international Santa? One of these years, yeah. we're gonna dress you up like Father Christmas. I hope so. Like Sinterklaas, lots of greenery, staffs. <laughs> we were like, well, hell, wow. we've, got, we've got a tailor. Sure. Maybe instead of another puppet. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but a puppet may have <laughs> flew through the night. John could educate himself on Santa a little bit. I did. And tell Gloria about it, because okay. she's going to need to know. I've not seen it. You've not seen it. No. Gentlemen, I give you Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I wear it? Well, the first. <laughs> Where are you going to put it? So this is his staff. Whoa. Whoa, it's a spoon. If there's something I know about John, it's that he loves big. Big oversized things, yes. That's pretty fantastic. It's My brother-in-law uh, is a carpenter, so he helped me out. The saw has a feature where you can kind of tilt it so you can start rounding off the edges. It's really good work. We hired security for the day. Toga, toga, toga. 2,000. Toga, toga, 2,000. Look at John. Ah, uh, this spoon? You pointed at this spoon. Mama. <laughs> yeah, mama. Dada. Dada shark. Do, 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 do. Dada. Dada shark. Mom. Mom, yeah, that's right. Mom. I thought it was just going to be a little robe I put on. You thought Matt was going to be simple you with thought, this? Yeah. <laughs> the ham mat still. <laughs> Holy crap, look at this. That is regal, Jonathan. You went a little clever with the hat. Yeah, so I wanted it to be Christmassy, but I also wanted it to be box Mackey, so it's a chef's hat. Andrew, bring us the beard and wig. Is it too tight? Does it hurt? No, it's fine. What if I keep it's, flicking it? It's fine. And then the hat. <laughs> 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 My hope was that you'd maybe stay in the costume to some degree. No. <laughs> no. We're gonna do obligatory segments that require me to be in the costume. I, I wanna see him drive to his house in that. Yeah, if we keep the house 28 degrees, fine. <laughs> Just Damn. going to hibernation. I think it'd be cool if the first Santa lap she ever sat on was this. How could she not believe in Santa now? Well, she did just watch him get dressed. This isn't John. This is Jinterklaus, a Danish folk hero. <laughs> now run the run the walkway. Do you like my puffy arms? Everybody no. in. Reindeer, please. Whoa. A homeless reindeer. Well, hi, uh, Blixton. You must be Blixton. <laughs> it could be Blixtum, one of the, ori the original name for the reindeer. Does he have the same voice as Trash Baggett? Hi, I'm the reindeer. Why don't you tell my kid? <laughs> no. 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 More of Matt's puppets to be scared of. You know me. I'm just John. Oh, no. My beard. That's what I say. Oh, no. My beard. So, Santa Claus. <laughs> 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 I had to do a little studying and researching because I didn't know much about the history of Santa Claus. Santa Claus that we lo know and love today originated from two sources. Saint Nicholas, a saint from about 300-400 AD from uh, Turkey, primarily celebrated in Norway, in uh, Sweden, where he was called Sinterklaas. Anybody who's watched the original Miracle on 34th Street remembers that scene. Sinterklaas kampuncha, hyphen in mein tuncha. Anybody remember that? Sinterklaas kampuncha. Hey, what in my shoes? Hey, what in my life? 
Sanctus Sancta He was a very generous saint, and so he loved to give gifts to good children. He would also put pennies if you left your shoes out. The other comes from Father Christmas in the UK, which was completely separate. He was just depicted as a man. It didn't really come together until the United States in about 1800, and you started getting those people who had come from Norway into the US, plus a great American cartoonist whose name was Thomas Nast. He pioneered the traditional image of Santa as a big jolly man. Originated also the reindeer. They also came from him. We also had the great poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas, which actually established and codified a lot of what we considered to be an American Christmas. Having a tree, having reindeer, because St. Nicholas would always ride on a horse from house to house. A lot of influences coming together to make Santa Claus what he is today. And now we've added to the tradition with um, Junter Claus. Junter Claus with a great wooden spoon and a chef's hat. Merry Christmas! Oh, 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 oh. oh Hanukkah, oh Hanukkah, can light the menorah. Let's have a party, we'll all Hi, I'm former internet celebrity Angry Kirby, and today we're going to be talking about challah bread. Challah bread is a traditional Jewish food that we eat every week and also on holidays. It comes in two shapes, round to represent the circle of life, and braided to represent your entanglements with your friends and your family and your job and people's expectations of you and your expectations of yourself. And the only way to get free is to rip your life to shreds. Also golden raisins. Once a year, during Passover, we eat unleavened bread. That's called matzah, the bread of affliction, the poor man's bread. The thing about matzah is during Passover, when the Jews were escaping Egypt, is they didn't have time to let the bread rise properly, so the bread became flat. And we don't have enough time to spend three and a half hours making challah, so basically we're gonna make our own version of matzah by accident. Are we in a way reliving the plight of the Jews? Yes. Both with our flat bread and our uh, neurosis. Yes. <laughs> when was the last time you made any kind of Jewish bread? Ah, uh, it's probably 10 or 11. You made it yourself? Sure. You never made anything like this before? I've made bread. Seems like the braided part is the thing that's complicated. That's the thing that we're gonna have you do that's gonna be fun. <laughs> Usually if you're gonna braid bread, use a braid breading template that I do not have. No, you don't. You just make a bunch of strips of bread and then you braid it and you hope it doesn't come out like a total mess. Well, I started the very first step, which is to take two and a half cups of 110 degree water and put the yeast in. Beat in honey, oil, two eggs, and salt. All right. Gooey, gooey food for. <laughs> the oil. Four tablespoons. Is this a tablespoon? That's not a unit of measurement spoon. Well, then. <laughs> the spoon came from a table. This is going to be a good bread. Risen or not? It doesn't really change the taste. Leave it to the Jews to be like, nothing needs to rise. Well, <laughs> I've made bread that hasn't risen before and it tastes fine, but like matzo bread traditionally is this like awful cr giant cracker that is like flavorless. And really they're just like, well, what makes it matzo is the rabbis bless the machines or whatever, but it's like, this tastes awful for no reason. So now we need eight cups of flour. Careful with the tablet there. It's only a $50 tablet. It's a 2013 Nexus. I love them, but they're old now. I have three of them. So that's three cups in so far, right? <laughs> that's half of it goes on the tablet. Traditionally in, in Judaism, you pour half of the cup of flour on the tablet. <laughs> they used to be stone tablets, but now they're- Ah, it's stone. Hey! Those are the kinds of jokes we're looking for, folks. If you can call in 1-900. I don't know what it is, but he keeps getting it right on the tablet. How many cups are we up to? Uh... Half a tablet. Would you agree that bread is awesome? Oh yeah. Bread is the best. Yeah, with me on this, Nina will use banana as the binder. She made a really good zucchini bread of all things. You would think like zucchini bread. It was like a chocolate chip zucchini bread. And it was really good. And she's also made really good like pumpkin uh, chocolate chip bread. It's gonna turn into a ball pretty soon. And now knead and incorporate that dough and get all that flour into it. Does this remind you of your childhood? No. <laughs> this is more just a Jewishy thing than a than a Hanukkah thing necessarily. Yeah. I mean, you can make potato pancakes, but I hate them, so I didn't want to mention that. Yeah. You know any like Hanukkah songs like oh, Hanukkah, gosh. Hanukkah, yo? Come like... light the menorah. Let's have a party <laughs> with all the menorah around the table. Yeah, I don't want to sing this song. But Keep singing. No. It's good to wear a black shirt to be playing with <laughs> flour. Traditionally, uh, challah is either made with golden raisins or chocolate or I think we you add them after you braid it. Isn't or it before. pronounced chocolate? Let's add the golden raisins now. Okay. I, I declare it. You ever bite into a cookie and you think it's chocolate chips and it's raisins? It's the worst day of your life, isn't it? <laughs> I thought it'd be all There's golden. no tablet to pour them all over. Frankie, get me one half a tablet. Oh, they look good. They'll be good in this bread, I tell you. This bread's perfect. This is very nice, actually. We're gonna cover it with a damp cloth. I'll get a towel out here. Should we just do raisins or should we do chocolate as well? We could do chocolate. Chocolate, well. dude. I, I 
That's probably, probably too much, but whatever. So is this like a dessert bread? Jewish people tend to eat it every Friday on Shabbat and on holidays. In the way that like wine is like uh, to celebrate life, so is challah bread. I'm a little confused about what makes it different than normal bread. It's thicker than normal bread. It's heavier. Yeah. Flour? It's heavier. It's got, yeah. it's got fat in it at the start. It's got the vegetable oil plus a lot of honey to sweeten. This is like your favorite thing about being Jewish. This what? Is this bread. No, What's either. your very favorite thing about being Jewish? Ah, <laughs> I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> it just sits there? It just sits there. <laughs> And you just sit there? We're back to finish the bread off. We're gonna roll it into logs and then braid it. Is there any kind of like kosher preparation to this? We should. Be yeah, don't considered? slaughter any cows or pigs while you're doing it. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm safe. I didn't slaughter any pigs or cows. Well, then I think we're good. And I guess to answer your question earlier about. Yeah, what's your favorite part of a Vienna uh, Probably songs or something. I don't, we have cool songs. We, not the Hanukkah songs, but like some of our songs are cool. They're like, Visham Ruben Israel, it's a Shabbat. They're cool. We have up from the grave he arose. <laughs> yeah. With a mighty sword for his foes. Should I be going longer than this? I don't, I that like, looks fine. That's okay. that's maybe a little that too person. wide because they expand. So you might want to make it thinner and break thinner it. Thinner and longer than we can break yeah. it. Yeah. Mine looks like a dog bone. <laughs> yeah. You might want to make them thinner. They say you're supposed to make three 16 inch long braids. We're each going to make three? Yeah, three uh, uh, logs. I'll give you one more tip and then I'll leave you alone. Oh. Okay. Yeah, are you in this segment or not? Is... I have to make sure it goes okay. Why? Because I have a vested interest in the deliciousness. It's a silicon baking <laughs> mat. It should go on top of that. The silpat. Pans are on top of the stove all the way towards the back of the aluminum pans. The oven is preheated to the right temperature. Mine are going to be over here. Don't touch mine, Frankie. Why? Mine suck? Yeah. Are we allowed to do this? Is this like sacrilegious, the fact that we're not no. Jewish and we're making this? <laughs> yes, you are allowed to eat Jewish food. We don't like hate you for doing it. Spit that matzo ball out of your mouth. Yeah, that's not for you. Just be good to people and share your food, share your table. Oh, that's what God says. God's like, hey, share the corners of your farm or I'll strike you to death with lightning. Mine was starting to like stick together. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trying. Jew. It's good. This one was mine. Mine's ready. My, my beast of a bread. It'll probably come out fine. It's just gonna come up as a loaf anyway. Here I will crack an egg and not screw it up. Hey, I actually did it, all right. <laughs> they look lovely, EJ. Guess they look which, like great bread. Guess which one's which? Um, Frankie? <laughs> How long do we bake for? 40 minutes. Watch your preciouses. Echo, set a 45 minute timer. <laughs> Echo, set timer, 40 minutes. Second timer, 40 minutes, starting now. Echo, cancel first timer. Cancel which timer? Eight minutes or 40 minutes. Echo, cancel eight minute timer. Eight minutes timer, cancel. Thank you. Echo, please don't leave. <laughs> Christmas bells, those Christmas bells. It looks painful. Today, on this old gingerbread house, we'll be making uh, an old gingerbread house. An old gingerbread house. <laughs> and I'll be providing John Madden-like commentary. They're technically edible, but you probably don't want to eat them because they're... I've made a batch of royal icing. This looks so intensive. Do you do this on the reg? Uh, like, I've never made a, like, a gingerbread house from scratch in my life. Door is really what you need in a house. With royal icing, it dries really quickly. One wall has been erected. There are erections in the gingerbread house. So from what I've read, you wouldn't want to eat the gingerbread house because you take out that chewiness. Like the recipes specifically are looking for hardness. Does it have any sugar in it at all? Oh my God, it has an, almost nothing but sugar. Four egg whites and then six cups of confectionate sugar. Holy. The egg whites is what I think is what makes it- uh, Cruel. <laughs> Now, are you really in the Christmas spirit? Are you feeling a lot of good Christmas energy? What does Nina's antlers tell you? It says that you have a moderate amount of Christmas energy. In the meantime, I can review the, the, the toppings we have. Spice drops. Oh, we got some Junior Mint, CJ. Gummy bears. Licorice twists. Ooh, candy cane straws. This is Starlight Mints. And uh, these vanilla wafers. Yeah. While it's wall's still open, I think that's a good Me idea. Me too. And of course, mac and cheese candy canes. I'm gonna cheat a little, I'm gonna get some string. Not too optimistic. And the last step was keep covered in an airtight seal because it will harden when contact with air. In a perfect world, I would have made it right before we did the segment. We've got a crying toddler, as you will have in your home if you try to make this gingerbread house. <laughs> They'll just show up out of nowhere. So classically, the idea of a gingerbread house is to attract curious children and then devour them. Yeah, that is the truth. So I never really understood why didn't the witch just eat 
all the candy that she had. Because she's a carnivore. But isn't there a lot of animal byproducts in most candy? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I guess not straight up meat, unless you're talking gelatin, then there's bones. So she's gonna eat the kids' bones anyway. Maybe she just wants a little variety in her life. What if she harvested the kids specifically to make more candy? <laughs> she needed bones to make the bleached oh. sugar. We got a rope, we got a rope, we got a rope, we do. John, how does this gingerbread house compare to making some mac and cheese? Um. It's very different, Nina. First of all, there's almost no cheese in it. <laughs> the next thing before we start decorating is to make a roof. Now again, I'm gonna cheat just a little bit as I have this uh, piece of cardboard cut out specifically. Wait a minute, you got the roof made of cardboard? If you're buying property that's made out of candy, I think that you already got a bum deal. <laughs> and if you put a lot of drippy frosting up on here, it's gonna create that nice drip down effect. And the drip down effect is a desirable thing. Sure. I mean, if we're doing like a Swiss chalet style house, it's definitely gotta be pretty drippy. Then I'm gonna put my cardboard on. Delicious cardboard? Ruin the illusion. You can start decorating, how's that sound? All right. Gummy bears. Gummy bärchen. I like gummy bärchen. You gonna give the German translation for all these? Uh, yeah. Vanilla wafers. Vanilla wafers. Vanilla wafers. Starlight mints with the real spearmint oil. Minter min Starlighten. I didn't read what the brand name was when I bought this at the dollar store. Not Twizzlers, but Swizzlers Chewy Watermelon Twists. All right, well, I mean, I'm, I'm essentially done. Can I just say? Uh, are you doing a voice now? <laughs> Roof construction. <laughs> Usually you'd start from the bottom up so that when rain falls on your roof, it goes over the oh, shingles, good... and that would seem to capture the water in the roof, well, which may not be desirable. There's some slight collapse on the rear wall. Oh no! <laughs> Although, fun fact, I didn't put any ginger in this at all because it was purely for taste. I made a couple parallel lines. I think there should be a big window on the side made of licorice. You can install a frame. How do the swizzlers stack up? For a dollar store brand X, it's not too bad. And then we destroy it with a giant spoon. <laughs> okay, here's my window. Santa, would you like to make a chimney so you can pop down there? Oh, sure, how do I do that? Maybe you can make it out of uh, these wafers that no one's touched. What? If you install the window, I'll make a chimney out of wafers. 60% will be eaten. Gumdrops. Maybe you can utilize some of this string. It seemed to work. Taking off the string really mm threw off the front of my house. So where's, the, here's my chimney. This is an interesting design. No place for the smoke to escape. Um, you don't need smoke. Ta-da! This does look like second and third graders made it, maybe. Let me tell you what I don't understand about this play. I see we got a lot of frosting. I don't know why you'd want one, two, three, four, five, six big, huge drips of frosting on the house. Football's a tough game, right? Maybe there's new ideas. I'm not seeing it though. You really gotta watch the stability of your windows. Didn't pay off here. Maybe next time coach will do a better job. I think they got a fundamental <laughs> problem. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Merry Chrysler. Look, this is what happens when you build on a budget. Has the foundational frosting begun to harden yet? Remember when we first put it on compared to now? No, it seems exactly the no. same. Now we let go of it and it just falls. It's just held together with spit and moxie. Matt's moxie and my spit. <laughs> as much as it saddens me when I screw up a recipe, it, it, it heartens me to see I other people. I didn't screw up anything. <laughs> Way too much frosting. There's not enough frosting. It's all over the place. <laughs> John thinks it's too sugary. It's way Look too at, sweet. It's funny, right next to our new studio, there's an abandoned house and this is looking comparable. I like Nina's stacks of mints though. Let me just say that. That's gonna be a tree. How how does it look from the front, Nina, on a scale of one to 10? A solid B. <laughs> a solid B? Come back here, Nina, and see the back and give me a rating of the back. Uh, the back, sorry, is a solid W. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll make a little porch back here. What would you say the property value is? 16 oh, bucks. Or down. <laughs> Could we just start like a meth lab in the basement of this house? I don't know why I decided to depend on these graham crackers for foundation where I can just stack them up like that. Nina, how much would we have to pay you to live in this house? Let's say this house was scaled up to human size. Oh, scaled up. That's that's a improvement, right? I don't know. Look, I just made a porch. I have like a job and like I can buy my own house. <laughs> <laughs> not that I want to smash a perfectly Please nice smash. house. <laughs> but this is not perfectly nice. It is what everybody wants. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice looking gingerbread house. Is it? Just say one. Do it.
It was way more strong than I thought. I was just, I was It's good. Oh. Oh, I should eat some. It's better broken. Can I have a piece of the, the house? All right, Frankie, it's time for some fudge. Today on Box Bag. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're gonna have two fudges today. This is a book that was sent to us by a fan, yeah. and it's got a great recipe for fudge. <laughs> it's fudge, but it's fun. It's a very simple butter fudge. This is a UK-sized recipe, so it's quite small, actually by John standards. And then Zach's gonna make us a custom designed fudge. A mac and cheese fudge. It's not gonna be like those mac and cheese candy canes, is it? No. No. Well, no. It's not gonna smell terrible. Well, I've seen like ones that have like fried noodles in them yeah. that, to add crisp to it, which is very nice, but never like having cooked pasta. I'm gonna be fudge. using a small pasta though. You chose Barilla? You yes, a Dicolini, because I like the shape. It's like reminiscent of pieces of an elbow. Did you emphasize that that's the Kerrygold Recipe this book? Kerry Gold recipe book. A Kerry Gold fudge. Yeah, it's made with real Kerry Gold butter. So we hope that this suffices as a mac and cheese segment. There's mac, there's there's cheese. I think you're there. I don't have the type of sugar they call for, which is called super fine. So I'm gonna make it. I could have used powdered, but powdered also has some cornstarch, and I don't want to uh, potentially risk it. I'm gonna food process it to make it into caster sugar. I wonder why it matters. I think it's too, I think it's too, um, so you don't get a fudge that's kind of crystally. It should only be another minute, I'm sorry. Butter and Velveeta cheese, unsalted butter. Is this your own creation, this mac and cheese fudge? Pretty much. I've adapted a fudge recipe for I mean, it. why shouldn't it work? Like that cheesy flavor in a chocolate. This does not contain chocolate. Otherwise it's gonna look chocolatey and it takes away the, the mac and cheese element. We associate fudge with chocolate like so closely. Yeah. Like fudgesicles. Like, we're not talking about mac and cheese pops. Yeah, because you can make all kinds of fudge. Come on, come join the Christmas. <laughs> I imagine that you're 25 now and you're watching this. Because it's Christmas time and dad's making me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to carefully monitor the temperature of this, so I've set up my magnetic thermometer. Butter is pretty much all done, but the cheese takes a bit. Look who's cooking. She says, Angry Kirby, make me a bread. We're up to 145. Like your body temp? Yes. <laughs> I'll be dead in a second. <laughs> it doesn't need to be refrigerated, right? This one kind of does. It can because of the cheese, probably. This is pretty much incorporated now. Yeah, LLC. Well, about as bad as it's gonna. <laughs> we're gonna add the pasta in here. Right now, it's just a very buttery macaroni and cheese. And we're going to add the confectioner's sugar. You add the whole thing. That's so weird to me. You've got this like pot full of like cheese and noodles, and now sugar. Some milk powder. Oh, milk powder. This does make a lot of fudge, this recipe. I bet you it'll be interesting. I bet you it'll be less gross than the candy canes. Well, it's got good Velveeta cheese in it. It doesn't smell like uh, discarded children's toys yet. <laughs> it's very buttery. Well, ain't that the way. It comes out nice because this is a nice non-stick pan. It won't go over 220. What's it supposed to be at? 235. Get the nice blob of yellow. So failure? No, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, add in the vanilla extract and let cool for five minutes. Take one. It tastes like fudge. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Don't you taste a yeah. little bit of the cheese? Yeah. It's it, not it, super it, overpowering. It influences it. And yours is uh, giving you pain? It's just life sometimes. It's gonna put it in the fridge to cool. The only thing I'm gonna basically do from here is just let it cool a little more than put it into a dish. I'm gonna take the bread out of the oven. It's looking beautiful. Look at these breads. Mine's looking real bulbous. They kind of ran into each other a little. They look real nice. And the fudge hasn't set? John Mine hasn't. hasn't. Zach's is fine. Mine. It didn't set either. Ooh. So Zach's got some delicious fudge for us to try here. It's fudgy-tastic. The noodles are an unusual experience. Well, the noodles add something interesting. Kind of like just like a chewiness. In Chewy the bit, yeah. There is a nice little cheese flavor in it. Uh... Not bad. It's all sugar and butter. It's <laughs> good. It's very yeah. fudge. Tradition is you rip off a piece and eat it. It's probably real hot. Just be careful. Is it? It's kind of bland, actually. <laughs> Look at this, a real freaking bread. I've never made bread in my life. I don't think I really technically did here either. If you could dip this in a little cheese, a little uh, olive oil, might not be too bad. I don't know. Maybe we should put more honey in it or something. <laughs> it's nice hot, fresh bread. Yeah. Yeah. Would you order a basket of this at the table? No. Mom. 
<laughs> There's nothing wrong with it except that I wish it was more flavorful. Well, they can't tell what it tastes like, so we could just say it's amazing. They don't this know. one's really good. This is awesome. There's the best bread ever made, ever. So good. Uh, wasn't my fudge really good? Is your fudge not going to be edible? Mm, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, 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 Frankie. My fudge is only partially set. You dip a little of that in a little bit of this, you're going to have a good time. Whoa. It's intense. It's very sweet. I'm gonna cut a piece from Frankie's loaf because Frankie's loaf looks like that, the most robust. Yeah, it's good fresh bread. The more I'm eating of the bread, the more I like it. It's usually sweeter, but it's very good. Look at the inside of Frankie's beautiful loaf there. That's oh, beautiful that's bread. bread. That's the first time anyone ever said that. That's my beautiful loaf right there. Look inside frankiesloaf.com.uk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays and a Happy Hanukkah to everybody? <laughs> everybody have fun. Oh, it was a great yeah. time. Everybody gonna have a Merry Christmas. Oh, we're gonna have a great oh, Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. This year has been a really interesting year. A little less box mac, still 24 of them, but a little less box mac. We try to introduce a few things to you. We're gonna keep trying. We love making content for you, and we will see you in 2019. Happy holidays. Merry Chrysler, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Down in the workshop, all the elves are making toys for the good Gentile girls and the good Gentile boys. When the boss busted in, nearly scared him half to death Had a rifle in his hands and cheap whiskey on his breath From his beard to his boots, he was covered in ammo Like a big fat drunk disgruntled yuletide Rambo And he smiled as he said, with a twinkle in his eye Merry Christmas to all, now you're all gonna die The night Santa went crazy Night Saint Nick went insane Realized he would get no idea Something finally must have snapped in his brain